Good evening all. Great, I can see that I am now live, which is brilliant. I have lots and lots of questions tonight. So I've had over 50 questions that I'm gonna try and get through um, in the next sort of 30 minutes. So I'll start off now. Can everybody hear me okay? If you can just put your, just give me a wave and let me know I'm being heard, which is good. Fantastic. Okay, so many questions and I'm gonna answer as many as I can got them all on my phone here but please feel free to ask as I'm um, as I'm going through as well so the first question is what are the most important tests to investigate with infertility we're currently one and a half years trying going through the NHS so far I've had a progesterone test and thyroid levels checked a pelvic scan and a waiting for semen analysis is there anything else a couple needs to check it's very it's a very good question but it's a very difficult question because there are so many tests you can do when you're trying for a baby um, and fertility isn't black and white there's lots of shades of gray so the general tests that you've had done are all absolutely fine they usually do blood hormone tests as well and they take place at the beginning and towards the end of your cycle so i don't know whether you've had that checked um, I think it's also worth uh, checking things like your thyroid just to make sure that everything is okay. But you've done absolutely everything that can be done. So you've just got to keep trying, going and going and going. Okay, another question here. We started trying to conceive in September 22. I've now had three consecutive miscarriages. 12 weeks and 8 weeks and two chemical pregnancies at five weeks. I've been told at this stage there is nothing to be concerned about and my partner thinks I should see the positives. My gut feeling is something is wrong. Are my concerns valid? And if so, where do I start? How do I begin to address this with my um, gynecologist? This is really hard and women do have intuition about their situations. I see it all of the time. And to have three consecutive miscarriages, I don't know how old this lady is. So if I'm reading out your question, maybe you can tell me. But there are more tests that can be done and should be done. Generally, when you've had three miscarriages on the NHS, these are looked into. So I, I think you do need to go back and you need to get um, everything checked as best that you can. Sometimes you may have to go privately to get some of the tests that are needed done, which I know is difficult financially if you don't have money, etc. But you need to push for this because there are other underlying tests that um, you need to do. OK, I am 32. I've been trying for a baby for four years now. When is the right time to do IVF? And again, this is a uh, this is a very good question because I don't think everybody needs IVF. Um, I think that you have to tick all the boxes before you go down that route. And some of those boxes that I work with are looking at the tests you've had done and the investigations you've had done, looking at your diet, looking at your emotional health and well-being, your weight, etc. But also the amount of sex you're having and if you're having it at the um, right time. Um, but in this lady's case, at 32 and trying for four years, you must have been doing it right at some point. So... There, there, you know, there are maybe underlying factors that haven't been discovered as yet, but I think that you are on the right route to looking at going down uh, an IVF cycle after this length of time. Okay, another question here. Best things to do to improve a positive outcome of a frozen embryo transfer. Two rounds of IVF, pregnant both times with very early loss, would like my FET to have the best chance. So frozen embryo transfer is when you've gone through IVF, but the, the embryos have been frozen. So the good thing about this is that it gives your body time to recover, but also those embryos are now made. So you, the fact you've got pregnant twice before is good. Just do everything you can. I mean, you know, rest, eat well, don't drink alcohol in, you know, in the lead up to this um, and, and just see what happens. But there are positive here about what's been going on for you. 
I want to ask a question uh, about PGTA testing and get your thoughts on that. I have a low AMH of 3.5 and so I'm unlikely to get a high number of eggs. Is PGA testing worth it or better off not to do it? It's a very difficult question this because you are right, your AMH is 3.5, so you may not get the amount of eggs that you're hoping for. And when you're going through genetic testing, you need a good crop of eggs to be able to screen. Um, some women with low AMH will go through this process uh, two or three times to get a good collection of eggs. I think what's hard about this, it, it's talking to your doctors. I don't know how old you are, but there are advantages and there are disadvantages to this. Um, the disadvantages are that it is expensive. It's considered one of the add-ons. It is, a, a, you know, very expensive to have done. Um, it is good, however, if you've got unexplained infertility and have been having miscarriages, it might be an indication to test. For some women, who are older um, with a good egg reserve, it might be good to test. So it's a, you know, it's a difficult question. This is something you need to go back to your IVF clinic with and, and discuss with them. Okay. Can you have sex during the luteal phase, the two week wait? I'm assuming that um, this is somebody that's having IVF, but I'm not sure. Yes, you can have sex during the um, two week wait, especially if you're trying naturally. Is likely COVID can make your period much shorter than I would bleed for one day or definitely not related? I think, you know, the jury is out about COVID. There's lots and lots of information out there about how COVID may affect your cycle. Um, but it depends again on how old you are, how short your periods are. Um, so if you're listening to this, uh, give me your age and give me the length of your general cycle. Um, I'm starting my monitoring cycle for IUI, intrauterine insemination, this month. What can I do to prepare for this? It's my first experience of treatment. I'm a single woman. Um, there's really not a lot you can do to prepare for an IUI cycle. But, you know, just make sure that you're eating well, you're taking um, supplements, um, you're doing everything that you can before you go down the route um of of doing this i'm assuming that you're doing this with um donor sperm as well okay secondary infertility i've got no problem getting pregnant just keep miscarrying what would you recommend uh, for me to do my partner is on your vitamins and i take tablets and vitamin d spray this is a difficult one for many women that have got pregnant quite quickly the first time round. sometimes the second time round, it is harder. I think there are certain things that you need to do. I don't know how often you've been miscarrying. Um, you would need to have some uh, miscarriage tests done. So I suggest you talk to your uh, doctors about this. Also just looking at simple things like your thyroid might be underactive, having had one child. If your periods are heavy, you might be a bit anemic. And all of these underlying factors do have an impact on what's going on. Certainly for your partner as well, it's well worth getting some tests done for him, especially something like DNA fragmentation tests, where you're looking at um, ROS, oxidative damage to the sperm. So certainly sort of look at, at those two things. But again... If there's a big gap between, you know, when you've got pregnant before and it's taking a long time to get pregnant, I think it's good to go and have um, some tests done or go and see one of the um, IVF clinics or doctors. Hi there, I have had a few miscarriages. I'm now pregnant and I've been put on eutrogesterone, progesterone. Sorry, I've just lost that. And thyroxine. Will this help in preventing miscarriage? It's very difficult to answer, but what you're taking is all good. You know, progesterone is a good thing to take. Obviously, your thyroid must be out of kilter. Um, so just by correcting this can make all the difference to carrying a baby. But I understand, Ash, as well, when you've had miscarriages, you lose your confidence in your body's ability to be able to carry a baby. And it makes for a very anxious pregnancy. So doing everything you can to work on your anxiety and rest as much as you can and just keep going. But there's no reason why this cannot happen for you.
question here. I started IVF at the end of January, but I ovulated despite the injections, so the collection was cancelled. Is this normal? I was a slow responder, but had one good looking follicle. It's not common, but it does happen. It does happen quite often. Um, and it's disappointing when it does because you build yourself up so much when you're going through a cycle. Um, but, you know, carry on and just see what happens the next time round. Okay. Will anything help with natural conception with PCOS? Um, I'm on the second round of Clomid. Um, I think, you know, Clomid is very good for PCOS, especially if you're having irregular cycles. It helps bring the cycle, um, the length of the cycle, it makes it shorter and um, helps you to ovulate. One of the things that I use a lot of is inositol and folate. And there are studies on inositol to show that it can really help to regulate the cycle and help with ovulation. So certainly if you're not taking anything like that, I think it's definitely worth um taking just have a look on zeta west it's all on the uh, website what can i do I, I i can't read this question because i don't really understand it what can i do at age to help me get pregnant so i'm just assuming that this lady is saying i'm older you know what can i do with my age to get pregnant i think you know when you are older it's really important that you do everything you can and you tick every box in order to get pregnant naturally or through IVF. It all depends on what your egg reserves are and some women are far more fortunate than others when it comes to their egg reserves. So, you know, what that means is that, you know, if you've got a good egg reserve, a high egg reserve and you're older, um, you've got more chromosomally normal eggs to, to, to utilise. But I know that you're born with all the eggs you're ever going to possess um, and they're genetically determined. But the environment in which those eggs are growing are affected by your lifestyle. There's so many studies now to show that the environment the egg that is growing in is affected by alcohol, cigarettes, diet, nutrients. So things like coenzyme Q10, DHA for cell membranes, the mitochondria of the egg is really important. You know, having a good diet, but also taking some supplements, it doesn't guarantee you know, that you're going to have the best eggs in the world. But what you're doing is you're being proactive, you're being in control of your fertility and you're doing the best that you can, not looking back and have having any regrets. However, having said that, and I don't know how old this woman is, you know, the chances of getting pregnant with IVF when you're 43 or 44 are very, very, very low um, in, indeed. So it's always weighing things up before you start any any cycle or any fertility treatment. Um, I'm 33 years old. How long should I try for be, before seeing a GP? This is a good question. On average, it takes eight to 12 months to conceive. That's quite a long time because for most women, they spend most of their time on most of their lives trying not to get pregnant. So when you turn that button on to decide you want to try for a family, for some of you it will happen straight away, but for others it can take eight to 12 months. Now you're only 33, um, as long as you are having plenty of sex, and I mean at least three times a week, um, that is really important because the sperm can last longer than the egg. The sperm can last for three to five days. Don't just work on that fertility fertile window. Have it throughout the month because you're keeping the sperm going. I always work, when I'm working with clients, I'm always looking at two things. I'm looking at age and um, age and the length of time they've been trying for a baby. So at 33, you're still young. Don't over medicalize this too quickly. It's very easy to go straight to your GP unless there are any factors in your history that your mother had an early menopause, you have a lot of pain when you have periods, you have heavy periods, your partner has had um, mumps or undescended testicles at birth or infections. That is a time that, that it might alert you that that might not be as easy for you. So, you know, try as hard as you can. And after sort of six months or so of really trying hard, then it's looking at what you can do to get some um, tests done. I know that um, you're told to wait for a year, but many women don't do that now. They do have to resort to private tests to see what their egg reserves, etc., are. 
So don't over medicalize this too soon. The reason being that for every test you do, there's always a result. And if that result comes back and it's not a great result, it's going to send you into an absolute panic. So do the best you can naturally first before seeking all this help. Take supplements, prenatal supplements are very good to take. Um, and eat well. If you're overweight, lose weight. If you're stressed, manage your stress, exercise and see what happens. Okay, another question here. Um, Okay, sport, sperm morphology, taking Proxeed, anything else my husband um, should take? I think that like sperm morphology is looking at the shape of the head, the tail and the neck of the sperm. And, and men's morphology is scored out of 100 and we only look at 4% of those being normal. So there's a high abnormal rate. Um, I think it's worse if the sperm morphology is... Um, on the, on the high side, I think it's worth looking at um, sperm DNA fragmentation, getting further tests uh, to investigate what's going on, looking to see if there's any um, infections. But also, um, there's a lot of work being done now on sperm microbiome. So the microbiome is the friendly bacteria that um, is found in sperm and female reproductive tract. Um, so one of the probiotics is lactobacillus. Um, it's worth taking something like Menseed, which we do, which is on the website to see if that can help. But make sure you are doing these extra tests as well. It's really important. And the time frame you're trying in. Don't leave it a long time without seeking help or maybe ending up with um, IVF. Uh, does fertility increase after miscarriage? I think, you know, this is a very difficult question and it sort of feeds into the question I talked about earlier about AMH and egg reserves. So uh, AMH is measured by a blood and it's a marker um, from the ovaries that tells us what um, egg reserves are like. Also, there's a scan that's done, which an ultrasound scan to check how many follicles you get. There's a lot of debate about AMH and egg reserves, etc. But some woman, women are more lucky with their fertility than others. So some women that are younger have lower AMH, but they still go on to get pregnant because the eggs they have got are more chromosomally normal or more likely to be. Women that are older with a low AMH, it's, it's harder for them. So it all depends on what your fertility is like. The fact that you are getting pregnant is a good sign. So do everything you can so to protect your fertility, your diet, your nutrients, supplements, um, etc. And get the tests and the medical help you might need if you are um, miscarrying. I've been di diagnosed with diabetes. I'm on the cusp of being diabetic. I'm on your supplements. Um, but does diabetes affect fertility? Are my chances lower now? Um, diabetes does affect fertility. It affects fertility in many ways. Um, part of the reason it affects fertility is high insulin levels. So if I know you're on the cusp of being diabetic, but blood sugar is very, very important for you to keep in check. Um, and having a diet low in carbs, knowing exactly what to eat is important for you because insulin um, affects your hormones, it affects egg quality, etc. So do the best that you can. One of the things I think you should be taking is inositol. And inositol is very, very good for blood sugar balance. Um, and it's good for um, diabetes as well. So do everything you can. If you're weight, if you're overweight, lose weight, really look at your diet. There's so much information out there now and on this um, on the internet uh, to be able to uh, help you. It might be worth going to see um, a nutritionist as well if you're if you're you know don't know what to um, what to eat. But really keep that blood sugar um, under balance. Very very important. How does the next question? How does how quick does an hospital take to work? Generally, it takes about two to three weeks. It might be longer for for, for some people, but it's it's a very easy to take. It's a powder, um, and it has many benefits apart from blood sugar. It can help with weight loss. It can help with um, the uh, maturing an egg. It's very rich in the follicular fluid that surrounds the egg. So important to take it. 
Another question about COVID, which I've already answered. There's much debate on COVID and periods and fertility. So, you know, there's people far more qualified to discuss this than me. So go on and have a look um, online. There's a lot of information on that. So I've had no period for nine months after coming off the pill. What can I do to help me ovulate? This is a good question because many of the women I see go on the pill when they're 15. They don't come off until they're 35 um, trying for a baby. So they don't know what a natural cycle is because obviously the pill is suppressing ovulation. Really important that when you come off the pill, you don't wait for it to come out of your system. You try straight away because studies show that if you come off the pill and you start trying, it's almost like there's a bit of a rebound. Um, so don't wait for it to come out. Try. You might stand a better chance of getting pregnant sooner. The other thing is that for many women, they do have cycle disturbances, sometimes seven to nine months of irregular cycles waiting for it to come back. The mistake I see so often with women that this happens to is they turn to um, complementary therapies, which I am a huge fan of as an acupuncturist. Um, they turn to complementary therapies and they try acupuncture, they try hypnotherapy, they try reflexology, they do everything. And a year can pass and the periods still haven't come back. Now, the only reason I'm saying that is that there are certain conditions when you've come off the pill that can affect your pituitary gland. Um, and you do need medical assistance to help you. You know, drugs can help you ovulate. IVF can help you get pregnant. But I don't like for women to waste valuable fertility time. And sometimes this can be 18 or 19 months without seeking medical help as well, because women are frightened of doing anything medically. They want to try everything naturally, which I agree with. That's why complementary therapies and the medical side work well together. They enhance one another. So always, um, always be aware of that. Again, you know, look at your weight. If you're underweight or overweight, this might be a factor as well um, to why you're not ovulating. Um, another question here, did I eat anything to get an ovarian cyst? Can I take anything to make it go away? No, you haven't eaten anything uh, to make you have an ovarian cyst. Um, but, you know, do look at your do look at your diet and what you're and what you are eating. It's a good question. Sometimes if you're having a lot of soya, it's got estrogen in it and that may have an impact. But you'd have to be eating a lot of soya for that to happen. Again, it's looking at, um, to, you know, getting medical help uh, to look at the cyst. And sometimes cysts are um, aspirated. Um, but again, you know, the ovaries are very, very rich in beta carotene, which are all the orange foods. So carrots, squash, all of those can be um, advantageous for ovarian health overall. About to start IVF, what are the best absolute essentials to give the best chance of success? Uh, it's a million dollar uh, question. I think um, there, there are many things I think that can optimise the success of IVF. And people think, I'm just doing IVF, I'm just going to go straight into it. I think preparation is absolutely key. You know, we all prepare for every single event in our life, from a wedding to the marathon to, you know, to anything that you're doing, you prepare for. So preparation for me starts in the lead up to IVF um, about three months before. And it's looking at your mindset. You know, if your mindset isn't right, when you're going into IVF, it's really, really hard to motivate yourself to make the changes that you need. So when I talk about your mindset, you know, are you stressed? Are you managing work? Have you got huge distractions going in, on in your life, such as moving house and moving a job, flying all over the world? You know, you've got to look and think, right, OK, when are these projects going to end? When can I start my IVF? Because you've got to be able to focus and you've got to be not distracted. And the women that I see going through IVF that are busy, that are all over the place, they haven't got time to do anything. They're the ones that make the errors. They forget to take their trigger injections. Um, they, they're not focused. They're, they're not doing everything they should be doing. So look at your mindset. Look at your diet. 
look at the supplement you're taking because I am a huge believer that these help prepare the eggs and the sperm ready for IVF. Rest plenty, make time for yourself. Um, I'm also a big believer in visualisation. So I do a lot with, I've got a, a visualisation um, download which guides you through um, visualization for IVF. So it starts in the preparation point up to stimulation and transfer. And it's just a way of helping you to relax and to build your energy up. You know, you really do need energy to get through um, IVF. And I really believe this makes a, the, the difference between success. But as I said earlier, every part of the way is important from the preparation to the stimulation, to the egg collection, to the transfer and afterwards. One um, vitamin, that one thing that's becoming increasingly important now is the uh, vaginal microbiome. And you've probably read a lot about this. There's lots of tests that are done and I've got a few questions on it here. And what it is looking at now is looking at the reproductive tract and looking at the endometrial lining. The, there, is diff, there is friendly bacteria that can really help enhance implantation. Um, but if the body isn't balanced in this, then it has the opposite effect. So lactobacillus is a probiotic that is now being used um, to increase the chances of implantation. So it's well worth looking at this if you're going through something such as IVF. And we've got FemSeve. There's a lot of research on it. Read about it on the website. It will give you all the information you need. Definitely worth taking. Um, I'm 41, had two miscarriages, a good MA, AMA. Should I be thinking about IVF yet or keep trying naturally? This is a good question. It's, it's, it's a very difficult one um, and it's hard when you've had two miscarriages. You have got the age factor going on in here. So one of the things I always look at is when with the length of time between the last miscarriage and how long you've been trying now. So if you're 41, you've had two miscarriages and you've been trying for more than 12 months to get pregnant again, I think you should go and see a fertility clinic. You should think about, definitely think about IVF and getting more tests done, especially if your AMH is okay. But whatever you do, don't waste valuable fertility time. Really sort of start to hone in on being strategic on what your next steps um, are. But you do stand a good chance, if your AMH is good, um, you do stand a good chance. Okay, uh, what is acupuncture essential when doing IVF and does it have to be weekly? Nothing's essential when you're doing IVF, but I do think there are many things that enhance an IVF outcome. So uh, acupuncture, uh, you know, I use a lot. I find it really, really beneficial. Um, the evidence um, is there to show that it can help with pelvic blood flow. So that's a supply of blood to the eggs, which um, it, that which they need. It can help with beta endorphin release, which is for stress. So it's helping with stress reduction. Um, there's all sorts of things that acupuncture can help with. And I think acupuncturists, there are many brilliant acupuncturists out there that know have, are very knowledgeable and know a lot about fertility and a lot about IVF. And I think it's good to do in the lead up to IVF. And it's, help, it's good to get that support as well because acupuncturists are able to give you a lot of support when you're going through um, this journey. I am 40. My normal period lasts three days, bleeding, but this cycle one day. Okay, periods can change from month to month. You know, eggs and sperm and hormones can change from month to month. So there's no, there's no fixed time. You know, you'll have some months that are better than others to be able to conceive because of your hormones or what's going on in your life. But if your periods are getting scanty and you're 40, I think it's good to go along, and you're trying for a baby, it's good to go along and have some tests to see what's going on. Checking your thyroid, but you know, seeking out um, fertility uh, help as well. So don't waste any valuable time, start to sort of look ahead. Um, is it unusual to not get pregnant seven months after miscarriage? Got pregnant first time with a miscarriage. Um, no, it's not. It's not unusual. And I think this is what's so hard about miscarriage and secondary fertility, because for so many women, they get pregnant the first time and they're just a bit shocked 
that it's not happening the second time. So again, you've been trying for seven months after a miscarriage. I've told you it can take up to eight months to 12 months to get pregnant. Make sure you're having plenty of sex, but also keep an eye on the time. Just keep trying for another couple of months. If nothing happens, then I think it's worth sort of going um, back and getting checked out to make sure that everything is okay. Um, another question here, I've got had eight failed transfers. What are your thoughts on ERA? Um, this is, ERA is a test that's done in many clinics now, and it's what I touched on earlier. It's looking at the um, microbiome of the uh, endometrium. So it's a test done, and the treatment is lactobacillus. Yes, I think it's an important test to do. I think it's a good test to do if you've had eight failed transfers, but there may be other factors as well that you need to discuss with your, uh, with your doctor. Um, can you use your products alongside metformin? Yes, you can um, use them along. Met metformin is something that's used for PCOS. So yeah, they're fine to use. How can I improve uterine health after a serious uh, pelvic inflammatory disease and ovarian abscess? Oh, this is, this is really difficult. I don't know whether you have... Um, had a tube removed due to this or what's going on. But obviously there's been a lot of inflammation in the body. So it's definitely worth looking at an anti-inflammatory diet. It's looking at what you can take to um, lower the inflammation. So things like omega-3 are good to take, coenzyme Q10 for ovarian health, folate, all of these things will be helpful. But again, it's looking at the bigger picture and what you need to do um, to conceive naturally and what your doctors have told you. I don't know how long ago this has happened for you, but it's obviously bad luck. So I'm sorry to hear that. Um, I am 36. I'm trying naturally. I have endometriosis and previ previously have had a cyst removed. I know my egg count is on the low side. I've been taking coenzyme Q10, extra vitamin D, prenatal, folate, zinc, omega and maca. Is there anything else I should take? Again, I would take Femsieve. I would look at the vaginal microbiome. Um, I think this is important uh, for you. And being 36 as well, it's important that you are strategic, you work within a time frame, and don't let time run on um, without seeking help. Is there any benefit in taking coenzyme Q supplements to help improve eggs? It's a very difficult one because there's a lot you can do to improve the environment in which the eggs are in, to improve the follicular fluid that the egg is surrounded by. We do know there are lots of studies now on coenzyme Q10 and how good it is for the mitochondria. And the mitochondria of the cell is the powerhouse of the cell. So for the ovary, it's 500 and 50 times bigger than the sperm. So it has the biggest, largest mitochondria in the body. So coenzyme Q10, I believe, is really, really useful um, for egg health. So I definitely think it's well worth um, taking. Alice and Emma test, can you have it if you have a regular ovulation? Um, I'm assuming that uh, this lady isn't having IVF, you're just trying naturally. I think you, yeah, you can have it. Um, so it's worth going and chatting to your doctor to see what can be done and how it can be done. I get pregnant easily, but can't keep, can't, car can't carry my baby. How do I get past seven weeks? I don't know how often you've been pregnant. There are other tests that might be done. And I think this is what's so difficult, you know, it depends on the clinic you go to. It depends on when you're, whether you're in the NHS or not. Um, so I think you've got to do a bit of research just to see what can be done. There are certain blood tests that can be done to see if you've got different factors such as MTHFR, autoimmune disorders, uh, factor V Leiden, etc. Um, and I think it's well worth sort of looking at some of these tests to see if there's any reason why your pregnancies um, aren't working. Um, okay, I've been trying for six months. I have PCOS. I ovulate each cycle, but irregular. Should I start um, Clomid? 
Clomid must only be taken under medical supervision, so don't just go off and start it. I'm not saying that you're going to, but I, I think it's important because I have seen women that just go on the internet and they buy you know, drugs over the internet. I think it's really important that you are monitored because there are always risks of taking something like um, Clomid. Um, I, I don't know how old you are, but again, I'm repeating, age is an important factor. The fact that you've got PCOS and you know you're ovulating, I'm assuming you've had tests because just because you have a period doesn't mean to say you're ovulating. The only way you can find out if you're ovulating is by a blood test, checking for progesterone. Um, I would take something like inositol. Inositol can help um, regulate regulate a cycle, so it's well doing, but well, you know, taken. I also think that you need to talk to your doctor and you need to talk about taking Clomid as well, because you've only been trying for six months, but I don't know how old you are. So, for example, if you're thirty five or thirty six, I think you should go and seek help sooner rather than later. If I had the option, would you go for fresh or fro frozen embryo transfer? I think it's a difficult one. Many women now are um, going down the frozen embryo route. I think it depends on what your embryologist says, what the eggs are like. I think you need to take advice um, at the time from the uh, medics that are looking after you. Um, I've come to the end of my questions now. I don't know whether I missed anybody out here. Let me just see what I've done. We've had... Eight miscarriages. Oh my goodness. And advice to take Phyllis Gratton. I am 40 and now last time I haven't got pregnant. That's a really, that's a really difficult one. Eight miscarriages. I don't know what tests that you've had done. I think that you're, you know, you're obviously under doctors. I think that you need to sort of be advised from them what you do, uh, what you do next. But there are many tests that you can have done, which I'm sure after eight miscarriages you have had done now. Um, again, microbiome, really important. Look at doing something like um, Femsive. Anyway, I've got to the end. Um, thank you all very much. I hope that I answered all of your questions and I'll be back on very soon um, to answer more for you. But have a good evening and um, this will be recorded so anybody that hasn't been able to see it will be able to watch it on my channel. Okay, thanks everybody. Bye bye.